Welcome to San Francisco, where I'm about to fly to Hawaii with United Airlines in business class on this Boeing 757. Some context behind this trip. As you may already know from watching previous videos on here, airlines don't just price their tickets according to how much it costs them to fly you somewhere. They also consider customer demand and the overall attractiveness of the route. Hawaii is a popular destination from the west coast of the USA. You can see here the 7.52 p.m. arrival into Lihui from San Francisco costs $594 in business class, one way. Most people on the plane have paid at least that fare in business class. But I started my trip from much further away, Toronto, yet paid only $3 more for the privilege. This is a bargain fare. It's cheaper per mile because of two things. Direct competition from Air Canada who fly direct and the fact you must change twice before getting to Hawaii. But for a points and miles collector, this is gold dust. Two extra flights and more than double the air miles. In my example, I routed via Washington, Dulles and San Francisco. A long day of travel, but well worth it. This video review is specifically about United's Hawaii service, which is kind of a shame for United because the flight was a real letdown, but more on that later. My 6am flight from Toronto was spectacular and the views were well worth the early start. Just an hour later we landed in Dulles and I walked straight onto the next plane which was boarding at the next gate. By the way, these seats on the United 787-8 are the same as on the 757. Pro tip, if you can find a bulkhead seat like this, they come with a footrest about three times the size of other seats. This flight was five hours long and was mostly uneventful. I had a delicious breakfast and mostly chilled out. So far, so good. Two out of three flights with no problems. United dropped us in Terminal 3 at San Francisco. When I visited, they had a great display of historic American consumer goods in one of the connector walkways. Things have certainly moved on and the pace of change in today's society is faster than ever. There are three lounges here. I've covered the main United Club, which I love, before, so I headed to the smaller one by boarding Area E. This has none of the charm of the main one by the Rotunda, so try to avoid it. Note that domestic premium tickets aren't enough to get access. I got in thanks to my Air New Zealand Star Alliance Gold status. There are some great views from this lounge though, to be honest. It didn't matter that I was off to Hawaii. I still got that thing where you look at other aircraft and wish you were on board going where they were going. Even this Southwest 737, which was only heading up the road to Burbank. So my layover here at San Francisco was five hours and I was kind of debating whether to go downtown to get some lunch or not. In the end, it's just not long enough for me to justify that level of risk in terms of getting back and getting through security and getting back onto the plane. So I've been here for about four hours now and I feel like Tom Hanks in the terminal. Anyway, the aircraft's just arrived, so let's go down and check it out. It's a 757-200, it's a classic Boeing design. United operates the 757 on some Hawaii flights. Others are operated by 777 and 737 aircraft. The ETOPS marker tells us this aircraft is cleared for extended twin engine operations over large stretches of ocean. As we board, a quick reminder, my written review for this flight is available only at Simple Flying and the link is in the description and the pinned comment below this video. Business class is at the front of the aircraft and is in a 2-2 configuration. There are just 16 seats in this cabin.
Window seats don't have direct access to the aisle and there is little privacy between you and your neighbour. I should clarify that, technically speaking, although this is a business class cabin, United markets nearly all domestic routes as first class, and that's mainly for historic reasons and is consistent with Delta and American. Sadly, I noticed a yellow sticker on my seat and this wasn't going to be good news. The seat had been marked as inoperative before I boarded. None of the mechanical functions worked and the seat was fixed bolt upright. There was no recline available whatsoever. Now, these things happen, but what's especially annoying is I had paid cash for my fare many months in advance. And at boarding, there were two unsold seats, which two passengers were upgraded into from economy. The crew confirmed to me the seat was broken before all of that happened on the inbound flight. Now, they really should make sure everyone who's paid for it has a working seat and then start upgrades. Your captain speaking. Uh, almost ready to push back. We've just uh, been clearing up a, a minor maintenance uh, issue uh, with our communication system. This was an 18 hour travel day for me, and I was really looking forward to stretching out and getting a nap. Even basic economy seats on the 757 can recline. Departing from San Francisco is always spectacular, although we'd be leaving land behind immediately. Lahui is five hours and nearly 2,500 miles from San Francisco. Our last contact with land is the Falayong Islands, and it's then straight onto the meal service, which kicked off with the drinks and a ramekin of nuts. The meal itself, however, was poor. For some reason, no menus were provided and consisted of a cider glazed chicken, which was very dry, and a salad which had goat's cheese and orange, but only came with a Caesar dressing. Yuck. A shame, really, because the food on the preceding flight was delicious. Anyway, onto the seat. Make no mistake, you'd rather be on a 757 like this to Hawaii than a 737 with regular armchairs, and that's partly why I chose this flight. But I'll never understand the infuriating socket placement, which requires many people to stand up to access. Still, there's plenty of legroom in the seat and a handy storage area below the screen. The in-flight entertainment comes with complimentary headphones, which are fine, and you can control some aspects of the entertainment with this remote. I'm not sure anyone uses the keyboard these days. Thankfully, unlike my last United 757 experience, the toilets were all working. United are replacing these 757s with Airbus A321 XLRs in the mid-2020s, so expect these old birds to be around for a while yet. Before landing, there was a second service consisting of a snack and landing cards to fill out.
landing in Lihui was 30 minutes behind schedule. I've flown United several times this year and had no problems, but this was a disappointing experience. Annoyingly, I complained to United about the seat issue and this was the entire response they sent me back, which seemed incomplete with no greeting or name included. In the end, I took it to United's Twitter reps who awarded me $200 in United travel credit. I always try to be fair. I'll next be flying United on their 767-300 in Polaris business class from London to Newark, which I hope will be a much better experience. A video, of course, will be coming to this channel very soon. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.